Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Cell Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer, songwriter, and rapper from Manchester, England. His name is Mehdi Lemma. Mr. Lemma. Yay. Finally got it. How you doing today, sir? Yeah. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Welcome to the Bring Back Cell Music Podcast. Um, I got your new single called Fresh and New, uh, mm-hmm. which is a, a cool, upbeat, I think dance track. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But before those who don't know Medi Lima, um, tell us about yourself. So my name is Medi Lima. That's M-E-D-Y-L-E-M-A for those who don't know. Um, I'm from Manchester, UK and uh, originally from Belgium. And uh, I do music. I'm, a, I'm just an all around artist. I sing, dance, rap, write, produce, whatever it is, I'll just do it. And, but I strongly more, mostly like uh, specialize in pop R&B sounds. So, but I do everything really. Okay. Now you uh, said you're originally from Belgium. Yeah. Um, and just for the record, we tried to get this interview in a week ago and we had some technical difficulties, but that's okay. Yes, I'm glad did. I got you back. Um, now in Belgium, did you come from a family of, uh, musicians or anybody in the music business besides yourself? Yes, I did. Um, my whole family actually is quite musical. Um, my father was in a band, um, in, in, in like a Congolese band. Um, they used to like travel the world and everything with the president at the time. And um, that's basically with the money that he made from that band. That's how he removed to Europe. And that's how I was born in Europe. Okay. And what did he, um, so he was in a band for the, uh, the, uh, con- uh, in the Congo. Yeah. So okay. the, the, it was a, it was a quite a famous um, uh, band called TPLK jazz. You can, you can Google them. And uh, he was like um, the Trump, the trumpet player in mm. the in the band so okay so that's made, he made quite of, a, yeah he, he made quite a, a good impressive you know career from that and a lot of money so we moved and then i have siblings who also do a lot of stuff i have a, a sister who's a backing dancer a brother who's a video, videographer photographer doing very well with his own um uh what you call it his own empire i guess and then i got some other brothers and sisters who do music but just for fun i guess okay um was your mom is she uh musically inclined too or just your dad yeah she's more of a music lover more than anything she's more of the business side of everything so okay. she she's very business minded i guess okay and so did you know from a uh, early age that this is what you wanted to do with your life do uh do music and uh sing actually no uh, no Mm-mm, no um but I've always known I wanted to do I wanted to do something in within the entertainment industry, whether it's acting, dancing, it didn't matter as, as long as it's out there. But then I think age nine is when I realized I want to do music. And then that's when I started writing songs from nine upwards. And then 14, I made the decision to be an artist. OK, so at 14. So you knew early on pretty much that this yeah, is what you much. wanted to do. Yeah. Um how did you uh, how did you get your start? How did you what was the what was your quote unquote big break? How did that happen? I don't really know. But I mean, if anything, I think the moment it was a few times. So I got first discovered at 16. So but long story short, that never happened because a relative just didn't want me to sign too early. She thought I was too young. So she was like, nope. You're not signing those contracts. You're not meeting those people. This industry is brutal. You know, the drugs, the sex, everything really early on. Um, I was mad at her at the time, but now as a grown up, I get it. I understand it now. So thank you for that. But it's, she was just basically telling me like, you need to grow up first. And then once you're grown, that's when you get into the industry, you'll understand more. So I was like, okay, okay cool. 
and right. then so i got it i got discovered 16 that didn't, that didn't happen then i got discovered again at 18 in uk television um you guys ever heard of the brit awards uh is that the british version of the grammys or... basically yeah yeah okay so that i i made my first appearance there and then from then things just slowly you know started moving around for me okay um now uh, you don't mind me asking so you get discovered at 14 you don't sign because um you know 16 16 i'm sorry and um you don't sign um for for various reasons but obviously um the maturity level probably Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then how old are you now oh i am 27 years young Oh, okay. So you just in your prime, I guess, getting started. Mm, that's yes. Fine. That's fine. Okay. I, I'm trying to make it before I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you're on your way, man, because I really do like uh, your new single, Fresh and New. Thank um, you. Now, this isn't your first um, uh, single. Um, no. When did you drop your first uh, your first song or your first bit of music? My first song was actually released 2012, if mm. I remember correctly. So it was been it's been a while, almost ooh, nine years ago. Wow, yeah. that was my first single. But I think the first single, if if I want to count, the first single that actually became a success for me, and in terms of views, in terms of people noticing and discovering, um, didn't happen until two years ago. Okay, was that another single that you released two years ago, or? Yeah, it was actually a whole album, but that single was the first single of of that album of my last album called Uncensored. Uh, but it didn't go any further because of COVID. Right. Yeah, we were unfortunately in COVID. I got you. Um, so, uh, let me see how I want to how I want to word this. Um, hmm. All right. Well, I, I'll come back to that. Okay. So fresh and new, um, you wrote and produced this. Well, let me ask you before we started, are you an independent artist? Or are you signed to a label or how does that work? I'm completely independent. Completely independent. Okay. Yes. And so fresh and new, um, did you write and produce that yourself? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. All myself, um, a few, I have a, uh, an assistant producer with me called Face, um, who's working with a lot of the songs of, on the new album anyway, so you will hear his sound. And then um, the guitar um, solo was re- played by someone else. Okay. Um, and you just mentioned uh, COVID. So I think, well, let me, I don't want to assume, but COVID, did COVID um, sort of delay things from progressing the way you thought, you know, prior to COVID? Um, Like, do you have a new album that's coming out following this track or? I mean, not only did it delay things, it completely stalled the whole thing. Mm. Like just the whole show just stopped. Okay. So I had to move on from the last album. That's why the last album was never properly promoted. So I just decided to move along because when COVID started getting better here, I was like, well, what's the point pr- uh, promoting an album that I just came out a year ago? Let me just um, start new music instead. But still, when I perform, still, you know, perform some of the songs from the last album in my sets. But um, I am coming with a new al- album. Um, is there a name yet? Not sure. Not sure. But um, we have a few songs already lined up already. So Fresh New is the first single. And then it'll just come back to back to back to back. And then the album comes out in March. I believe. Okay. So that was my next question. Do we have a date? Uh, a date? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the prior, what was the name of the prior album um, that you re- that Uncensored. Uncensored. Okay. Yeah. Is there any thought of going back maybe after this album is established to re-release Uncensored since it didn't get the full attention because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, inter- I mean, 
Uncensored was more of a style. Every every track was just a very different style. But I think because I had to move, turn it down a few notches just for people to try and understand my sound because my sound is so different. So I like to be innovative. I like to 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 make sounds that was never done before or or have or genres that have never been mixed together before. So, but people have a hard time understanding that as a new artist anyway. So I just thought, okay, right, let me just play back a few times and then just move with some music that will be, make people, naturally make people move, really. Okay. Um, now, earlier you mentioned that your dad was a musician. Um, mm -hmm. um, who were some of your influences uh, growing up? Or even now, who are some of the people that you... Uh, do you see? Do you see those pictures? Uh, I see Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that... Whitney. Whitney. Okay. Destiny's Child. We got Usher, Janet Jackson, Bruno Mars, Neo, TLC. Up there, you don't see it, but up there, we got Stevie Wonder, Madonna, Sade. So yeah, all the greats, all okay. all the amazing. Yeah. All right, so you put These all, are all your... the people, all the people that influenced me, basically. Okay. So you yeah. put your influences okay. on the wall. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just to rem it's just to constantly remind me, you know, why I'm doing this. Okay, and where the inspiration comes from. Okay, and so let me ask you: with the the photos on the wall, out of those photos, is there a particular style that you maybe not mimic a hundred percent, but certainly was more influenced by than say some of the others? Well, well, I I'm. A different artists influence me for different reasons. So I'll give you an example. For example, Outkast, um, oh. Andre 3000. I I love this guy. Um, he was he was I, I don't I wouldn't say bashed, but he was sort of kind of laughed at for being different, for being weird, for being not understood, you know, and always coming out with these new fancy flamboyant type of outfits, and people were questioning that and and but he stayed, Andre 3000 stayed in his lane and I never, you know, stopped respecting him for that. So in that sense, I dress, you know, very, you know, flamboyantly myself, you know, and I choose colors that people would never dare <laughs> to walk in in the streets. I do it so that people, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a look at me type of thing. And um, for example, with sound, uh, I listen to Pharrell, Justin Timberlake, Michael Jackson, um, and even the dancing, Michael, Janet, you know, like, um, TLC, I gotta give it to TLC because I like, I like that band because of their confidence and the cockiness. Mm. That's very important because you gotta go out to people's faces, especially nowadays in 2021, we've had so many artists the past 30, 40, 50 years the next person has to be the cockiest person to say, yes, I can do that too. And I believe I can be that person. So here I am. Okay. Uh, now, fresh and new, um, I guess I got it a few weeks ago. How long has it been out? How long has it, has it been uh, available to the public? A month. A month. A month. Okay. And how has it been? We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now... Back to our conversation. Received by uh, by your fans or by the general public. Ooh, they love it. Love it. Okay. All right. Uh, and I, I can see why, because it's like it's just an upbeat, positive, upbeat song that you can just kind of, you know, uh, you know, bob your head to. Um, mm -hmm. Now we touched on it a little bit earlier about COVID. Are you doing more performances now, or? Um, um, yes, actually, okay. I had a performance this Saturday, two days ago. Actually. Okay, in um, Manchester or uh, no, Liverpool. It's Liverpool. It's still England, but it's Liverpool. Uh, okay, more up north. Okay. Um, 
And I got another one, a few more coming, um, if not December, next year. Okay. So, All right. So things are slowly starting it. To be next year, to, but to get I, back I got to, a, I got to, a lot of to normal lined up coming up. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, it, over here, over here in the UK, it's already, it's been normal for months now. Like we've been oh, able has. to go out to clubs and, and, all, and all that sort for months. It's, it's been cleared. Okay. Um, now, um, uh, are you real big on, uh, on social media? Well, I would say real big. Um, well, I mean, maybe. I'm talking about, are you, I'm not saying, are, I'm asking, are you like really involved in social media? Um, um yes. Okay. Do yes. you, um, um, mostly like the Instagram and TikTok. Okay. That was follow up my next question. Um, have you done like the, the Instagram live? performances and Facebook live and that kind of thing? Uh, no, um, only because, uh, with Instagram, um, I real I always look at engagements when it comes to things like what works the best for each artist. For some artists, I have friends who are artists here in the city and it worked pretty well for them. For me, it wouldn't have worked anyway, cause it's not my thing. I, oh. I like to make sure that people see me in person because uh, there's a completely different vibe. Number one, completely different vibe. Uh, you feel the energy. And um, even if it was on a screen, I would prefer it to be uh, filmed on actual cameras and then edit it and put it on YouTube and things like that. Uh, but yeah, Instagram live, I've not had a lot of engagement on that. No, I use uh, mostly like TikTok stuff and, and, I mean, my TikTok blew up out of nowhere in the past. Okay. All right. Three months. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, let me uh, let me ask you a quick question too, because you're from you're from England, and there's been a lot of great uh, English artists. Are there any artists like um, that you would look from England? I'm, I'm asking. I know you showed us your wall, but some of the English artists that that you admire or that you. Um, Maybe have um, it had some influence on you. I mean, I won't say much about influence, but I definitely have in my admired a lot of British artists like Jesse J. Um, uh, to some extent, even Ed Sheeran. Um, right now, right now, Ed Sheeran is on top. He's like number one. Three yeah. songs in the top ten. Well, four yeah. actually. Four songs in the top ten right now. He's absolutely loved in this country. Um, and um, Little Mix. I love Little Mix. These these girls can sing, okay? Um, there's a few people. And then there's a lot of, like, underground as well artists that I listen Because I listen to more underground UK artists. Like, um, I have this friend of mine who's called IMDDB. And uh, she's pretty underground. But she's she's doing very well for herself because she's got a lot of cosigns from bigger labels, bigger artists. She works with Calvin Klein and The Vogue and... Tommy Hilfiger, all these people, you know, she works with all these people. So, um, and, and I don't know if you know, um, Georgia Smith. I do. Ever heard of well, Georgia Smith, she's another British artist. She's had a lot of course I from Drake. Um, cause Drake is the one who, who sort of kind of like discovered her, I guess. She's another one who's, um, doing pretty well for herself and I love her music. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, British artists out here doing their thing. Okay. Sure. All right. Um, now, when I introduced you uh, before the beginning of the show, I said that you was a rapper too. Um, uh -huh. And I seen one of your videos where you rap. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, oh, well, first of all, let me ask you on your upcoming album, is there some rap on that album or is it just strictly? Um, oh, no, this album is going to be completely everything. So it's, it's, I'm, I was thinking of calling the album just Medi Lemma. Um, just a way of, it's like a statement saying like, this is the album where you finally get to know me properly. Like lyrically, you'll hear in the lyrics what I'm about. Um, so I'm, we're really trying um, to have some great substance in there and also to a point where people can relate to it too. And um, I'll be having a lot of, sing cause I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an, I'm, I'm an actor, I'm a rapper. So I want to be able to incorporate all of these talents that I have in the album, it's like perfectly done. And right now, Refresh It New, um, the video 
I, I'm showing the love, my dancing uh, abilities as well. Uh, I'm singing and all that stuff. But ev- as the tracks, every single comes out, you'll start hearing where I can go, what I can do with my voice. Because I never felt in my older songs I was ever able to show my true talent. I don't know why. Okay, but do you feel this upcoming project is going to just showcase all the things that you can do? Yeah, we're going all out. So I made this basically, so I made this um, this pact with myself and people are, tell, are telling me I'm crazy for this. Um, so I made this pact with myself. Um, I've been doing music for 13 years and I've been feeling like I wanted to, uh, not, I wouldn't say, I wanted to quit being an artist, not music, but wanted to quit being an artist because I felt like I've been doing it for so long that it's almost like nobody's discovering, nobody's really ca- seemed to care almost. So I was like, why, why am I doing this? Why am I, you know, why am I here? So I said, um, I made this pact to myself with this album to push it as hard as you can. Like complete gas pedal, go all out, show all of your talent as if it were the last thing that I will ever do ever. So that's why we're trying to make sure this album becomes the one. So that's what we're working on. Okay. Um, now you said you're um, you're an independent artist. Um, yes. With being an independent, how do you how are you going to promote this uh, this upcoming album that you have coming out? Um, there's a few ways we have. So, um, I have my PR who helps me out. Um, we're getting different radio stations, different blogs and stuff to help me uh, with press and stuff. Give me some leverage really. And then, um, on my side, um, I'm, I'm also working a lot on TikTok because TikTok is the way forward nowadays. You know, this is how songs become number one. If you don't know about low. Nas X and Old Town Road, how that song became, a, just go back to TikTok. Just go back to the start how that started. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I'm basically what I'm doing right now, I'm literally following Lil Nas X's footsteps. Like, how mm. did he get so big so quick out of nowhere? So, and he said, literally, just TikTok is what blew wow. it for him. Okay. Got it, people, got it. you know, people get because a lot of influences can just dance to your song and People just get interested and then that's it. Okay. Boom. All right. So TikTok is the way to go. All right. Um, Mitty, tell people how they can reach out to you on social media, speaking of uh, TikTok and all your other stuff. Okay. So my name is Mehdi Lemma, but on some socials, it'll be Mehdi Lemma Music. So it's M E D Y. L-E-M-A music, all right? Medi Lemon music. That's literally all you have to type. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Same thing. Spotify, Medi Lemon, M-E-D-Y-L-E-M-A. I'm the only one out there. And that's what I like about my name. It's very unique. Like you type me, there's no other Medi Lemon out there. So I did good. <laughs> all right. And where can people pick up your music? Um, they, you can hear it on Apple Music, Spotify, and every other music platform. Just type my name and you'll find it very easily. I'm pretty much very involved in everything I do in terms of like releases and stuff. So I make sure that my name is, is literally in every website, everywhere, even the ones where people never think to even look. I'll put it there too, just in case. Right. So do you, you have can your, find me anywhere. Do you have your do own I, website? No, um, I had one, but um, it, it ran down. So I think we're working on making sure uh, one gets created okay. very okay. soon. So by the time, by next year, definitely things will start running smoothly. Okay. Uh, and so the best way to reach out to you is on social media, um, mm-hmm. Medi Lima. Okay. Yes. Um, Medi, I appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Like I said, it's so, Thank you. you know, we had some mix-ups last week, but I'm glad we made it. Anything else you want to add before yeah, we, we um, before we um, close out this interview? Uh, you, did you hear my last question? We, you froze up on me. Let's do this again. Hold on. Hold up. All right. Just... 
fix this real quick. Okay, it's back. Okay, let's let's do this. All right. Um, anything else you want to add before we uh before we close out this interview? Um, yeah, just check out my YouTube. Honestly, I have a lot. I have a few music videos, and in uh, that way, it will help you sort of realize what I've been doing. Um, it'll help you see, you know, my sounds and what I can do, and just keep in just keep fishing for me. You'll see, in, like, give it a few, maybe two, three months. Give it, a, give it a few months, and then you'll see. Just keep fishing. Okay, and you mentioned YouTube. What's the name of your YouTube channel? It's just a Medi Lemma, just Medi -Lemma. M E D Y space L E M A. Okay, and we'll have um, we'll have um, Medi's uh, information on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com, also on the show notes. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, and also if you're listening to it on uh, our podcast, Medi, appreciate you taking the time today, sir. Thank you so much. All right, be safe. Good luck with everything, man, and um, keep us Thank posted. You. Oh, yeah, I will. I definitely will. All right. Thank That's you. That's Lemma on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Medi Lima. You can find out more about Medi on his social media sites, which you can find in the show notes on this video and also on our podcast, as well as on our site, bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at bringbacksoulmusic.com. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.